Hi there! It's been a while since we did a grasshopper tutorial, so I just thought that maybe we should kind of jump in and do a quick Voronoi 3D texture tutorial. No, I'm, I'm kidding, I will never do that. Instead we will look into Pufferfish plugin, which is great! And we are not going to just look into the whole plugin because it's way too big. By the way, you can get it from foodforrhino.com. Uh, but instead we are just going to look at a small portion of it where we uh, we can see this kind of sub sub tab I guess sub tab where it says average mesh weighted average mesh twin consecutive meshes twin three meshes and twin two meshes Okay, the naming is uh, it might be better, but you get you get what I mean. That's a tongue twister right there Either way, we're, we're going to take a look at how, how we can tween between meshes. So for this to work, actually let me get all of them here. There we go. Bam. Okay. So those three and these two. So for this to work, the meshes need to have the same topology. So what I mean by topology is that the, the amount of vertices and the placement of vertices and the way those vertices connect into polygons needs to be the same for two meshes so or, or multiple meshes so that you can tween between them, right? Blend between the two meshes. So um, if you were just... and if you did this... Uh, let's say you have a box. Uh, let's go for shaded view. You have a box and you also have a sphere and you do um, th uh, these will ask you for meshes so you convert your box into a mesh and you convert your sphere into a mesh and you reference them in into grasshopper into uh, this empty mesh container or rather two of them two empty mesh containers set one mesh for the box Set one mesh for the sphere, um, and you plug it, plug them into this easiest one, which is called average mesh. It just basically will get an average between the two meshes. So plug in the first one, plug in the second one. It's not going to work, right? And it's not going to work, and it's going to complain. Uh, and it's going to say meshes are required to have the same topology, right? Not, you know, it's it's. Um, these two meshes have different amount of vertices, like points, they have different amount of polygons, and like nothing matches. So this won't work. Instead, we need to construct a mesh, right? Um, and then change it by just moving its points around, but keeping the, 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 the way those points are connected, um, not, not, not changing that, basically. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say, what's the best way to do this? Let's go to, uh, let's keep, stay in perspective view. By the way, if uh, this is boring, just speed up the video two times. Like bottom, right hand side corner, settings, speed, X2, uh, should, should be good. That's at least how I watch tutorial videos. <laughs> anyway, um, let's create a rectangle. Uh, starting at zero coordinates and just let's go for 10 by 10 So 10 units 10 units square, right? So this is let's say our polygon, right? Our <clears throat> a Building block for our topology One of, What I'm going to do with it is I am going to make a grid a 5 by 5 of these polygons. So I could just uh, actually let me do it the long way around. I will just do this, copy it five times to the right, take all of them, copy them, one, two, three, four, five times to the along the y axis. And just to make it a little bit more fancy, I'm going to take the center one and I'm going to delete it all together. I'm going to take one of the corner ones, holding down the old key, I'm going to make a copy of it, right? And then I will just rotate it 90 degrees like that, so that I have one of them, you know, vertical. I'll just move it, 
from the bottom left corner to to the hole here so we know that uh, since i have deleted this rectangle here there's a hole there's going to be a hole here so i'm going to make a chimney right i'm, I'm going to build four walls so along the hole and since everything is square i can just do this like make a copy holding the alt key whoop, holding the alt key rotate 90 degrees bada bing bada boom that's done okay so we have this uh, this thing done and i think that's enough of, of, of polygons for us to kind of get something out of this I, I i i honestly don't know what i'm doing right now i just uh, thought about it like a hat or a chimney anyway so we have this these are curves closed curves we need this to be a single mesh how do we do that well honestly you could kind of do it in grasshopper maybe we should do it in grasshopper because this is a grasshopper tutorial so for now let me just drag all of these away a little bit and we're just going to work here and in this left corner so i'm going to select all of the curves reference them in as curve curves nope not as curves crv there we go empty curve container like that right click set multiple curves all of them are now referenced in and i am going to create a surface is it enough to do, just do a boundary surface i think it's enough i'll just do a boundary surface through all of these curves so it's basically every every flat rectangular curve becomes a surface right easy and then I'm going to take, so this is 28 untrimmed surfaces. I'm going to take all of them and I will say, create a simple mesh, simple mesh. Create a simple mesh through every single surface right here. So it's basically going to just give me like a polygon for each surface because all of them have four points. So we have that and then we, join up all of the meshes uh, we and then we can either use a line uh, that's not how you write a line a line vertices component or you can use uh, combine and clean component or you can use i believe even weld uh, mesh weld vertices or weld mesh even those should should work i will use uh, combine and clean because I think this one will will do the trick. Let's just check. So here I can see from this text, or maybe it's a little bit too small for you. Let me just show it like that. From this text, I can see that here we have 112 vertices and after combining the vertices together so that there are no duplicate vertices here, we get 40 vertices. And I think this is close enough. So we are going to say that's good. I will just bake out this mesh back into Rhino. Bake, okay. Don't need curves anymore, so I'll just type in cell CRV in Rhino to select all of the curves and hit delete to get rid of them. Um, keep in mind, and I don't need that um, definition anymore, so, or actually maybe I can just do something like this. There we go. So keep in mind that Eh. the shading is going to be fucked uh, bad the shading is going to be bad uh, and the reason be behind it is since we merged all of the vertices it will try to shade this mesh as if it was smooth that's fine that's not not a big deal uh, it's just a shading issue uh, the, it, the geometry is indeed clean so I'm going to take this mesh and I'll just make a copy of it to the side and then I'm going to mess around with it so I will select the mesh I'll hit F10 when I hit F10 I get all of its control points uh, I believe a shortcut for it is or command for it is points on enter yeah we get all the control points and now I'm going to just move these control points around so let's see 8 minus 8 Minus 16, 
uh, 16, something like that. What's singing? Something singing? No, no singing, please. There we go. Um, what else? Maybe these points. Hello, why can't I? Let's just go for a wireframe view. Um, it's, it's easier to just select the points that you want in wireframe view. So like that, those four base points, and I'll just maybe move them down, I don't know. Let's try. How does this look like, shaded? Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. So I will be moving them down and then selecting the bottom four, selecting the top four points, perhaps rotating them a little bit, something like that, perhaps scaling it up a bit more. Yeah, I, I mean, some sort of shape, I, I, I don't know. Honestly, no idea what, the, what I'm doing. <laughs> um, right, so continuing on with the control points, we can move this one out, yeah, or, or these ones out, like that. Maybe, perhaps these two and these two can go down a bit like that. I think that's nice. Yeah, I'll do the same thing for, for this one. So I, I have no idea what I'm designing, I'm just kind of designing. Uh, something. Some sort of a chimney system. Okay, so we have that and maybe this one is a little bit more narrow. No, no, no. Um, maybe only the, the end is a little bit more narrow, something like that, more, something like that. Yeah, I think that looks good. And then this one, maybe this one goes down even further, nah, nah, let's, let's keep it like that. But I will make it more narrow. Alright, so we have some sort of a thing going on, right? Um, do we want this to be sp a spiky boy? Nah, let, let's keep it as a box. Okay, two meshes look different. Topology is the same. I didn't delete or uh, trim anything, right? I only moved points around, meaning that if we reference this mesh here, set one mesh, and we reference this mesh here, set one mesh, we get a mesh in between them, somewhere in between here and here, right? That's an average mesh. Okay, uh, so that works, that works great. Um, but it's not pretty. Uh, honestly, all of these meshes are not pretty. So my thought is, what if we... Now, let's make it pretty last. First, let's do... do like, like work, work with it as if it's ugly and then we will make it pretty. So average mesh, that's the first component. Um, just gets you, gives you an average mesh between the two. You can also average out the colors, but we're not going to deal with the colors here. Um, no reason. Anyway, so that's done. Or actually, maybe I, I should keep it. Let's keep it. Group it. Disable preview. Or do we not? Uh, it's, it's super simple, so I'm not going to keep it. Okay, so we have two, two meshes here. Now we have <clears throat> weighted average mesh. So honestly, for this one, I believe you can have more than two meshes. Set of meshes for averaging. Okay, sure. Let me grab this guy. Move him to the side here. And let's mess around with, uh, with the control points again. So I'll just do something a little bit more simple than the previous time. Uh, maybe scale this up. Push this down, something like that. 
maybe something like does this also lift yeah sure let's let's lift this as well and this 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 up, 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 up. these corner points can kind of move inwards eh, doesn't look that good so actually let's move this up scale it up yeah sure so some you know some sort of a form it's a little bit big so let me just scale um, 0.8 make it smaller okay we're good let's come back here and create uh, one more mesh component here uh, set one mesh like that okay so actually let's call them uh, so this one is going to be a mesh boring uh, this one is gonna be I'm just right clicking on the components by the way to, to call them mesh uh, cool and this one is going to be mesh uh, what the fuck okay so we have three of these let's just use a merge component so that we can kind of merge them into one list so that i don't need to kind of use the shift key all the time to to connect them to different components so we have basically a list of our three meshes running here and i can just kind of connect it like so to the mesh list of um, weights uh, weighted average mesh component here so that's our mesh list uh, and then weights so it needs weights um, the way weights work is, well, actually, if you hover your mouse over this input, you'll see. Okay, you, you, you won't, it doesn't say anything, so let's instead just show you. Um, you have three meshes, and each of them have strength to basically how much those meshes are pulling the output towards themselves. How how similar is the output going to be to any one of these three meshes. So it's basically strength, right? Um, honestly, the, the way I work with it is always between zero and one. So we will have first slider 0 0.5, second slider 0 0.5, third slider 0 0.5. So we have three sliders, we will merge first second third like that connect it that's it there's our weighted average mesh we can't really see it that well so let me just create a custom preview custom preview and there it is so now um since all of these are 0 0.5 so all, the influence of all of these three meshes is the same the output is going to be right in the middle you know a chimera between all three of these which it has like 33 percent of all of them um, like genes wise so if i move this to one so let's say mesh boring this guy gets influence of one data uh, or, or mesh cool gets influence of zero and mesh what the fuck gets influence of zero then it's just straight up the output is going to be you know of, of, of our boring mesh and it, in, in, in working it with it like so you can kind of do interpolate in between those two meshes in any way you want which is cool is this intersecting Okay, so intersections are a thing, apparently. Um, of course they are. Uh, it doesn't care that it's if it's intersecting or not, so be, uh, be mindful of that, that at certain points it might start intersecting. Honestly, I think if we just take these four points and kind of scale them up, whoop, Ah, uh, but then it's going to intersect here. Ah, uh, la 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 la. 
What if we scale them down? Yeah, that's that's the way to go. Okay, so scaling it down work. Anyway, so this is how um, this weighted average mesh works. Let me just uh, group it and forget about it. So I'm just going to borrow these three meshes together with their merge, co copy paste, hide all of this, Let's delete that. No need for that. And we will continue working with these three meshes with other components. So here we have two consecutive, no, not that one. Tween two meshes component, tween between two meshes, that's super simple. Uh, for that one, we don't even need the merge. We can just kind of see, well, the boring mesh is boring. So let's get rid of that. And instead just let's tween between the cool one and the what the fuck one. So cool, cool, what the fuck. I should not call this that because the video will get demonetized. So let me just call it uh, strange. There we go. From now on, this is a strange mesh. Shouldn't swear, huh? Okay, so works in exactly the same way. Uh, but here, the factor is, is, is the, the, it's like the key important thing, the factor. Because here I can write uh, not just one number, let's say, you know, if, if I just have a slider 0 0.5, connect it, whoa, whoa. you know, you've already seen this, you know, thing that transforms between the two meshes, that's cool. But if I have two sliders, right, I can have two meshes, which means if I have a range of numbers between 0 and 1, I can have a lot of meshes, right? If I multiply this by 100, not multiply this, but I basically end up with 100 meshes in between these two. And the nice thing is if I just move this, you know, it kind of follows. So that's cool. Uh, that's kind of nice, but you know, that that's all it does. Uh, just kind of copy. Well, not all it does, it's pretty damn cool that it does that, but it's basically all we can do with, with this. So this is where I'll just delete it all together, right? This is where, do we even do tween through meshes? Let's not do that, let's just do this, tween consecutive meshes. This is where this guy comes in. And this one is, I, I really enjoy this one and uh, the, this tool is the reason why I did this tutorial. So we have three meshes here, right? As per usual, we plug them in, right? Then it has factors, right? But now it's going to factor in between these three meshes, right? So it's going to go from the boring mesh to the cool mesh and then to the what the fuck mesh, right? So it's going to make this kind of a V shape. Well, V shape if we look at it like that. Uh, so let, let's do a range just to show you. Range 100 again. You know, interpolates. That's great. Guess how many? How many meshes do you get? If this is a, if there's a number 100 here. You're either right or wrong, I don't know, but it's 202. It's because this outputs 101 numbers and you have one path here, one path here, so it's times two. So 101 times two equals 202. That's how it works. Uh, so let's make it less and now let's make it, let's make it nice. Or do we make it nice later? Oof. Well, first of all, I think it should first be like this, like flat. Can we actually do, okay, sorry, I'm now just going to start designing, but can we just do mesh boring to the end as well? Yes, we can. Okay, so now it's going to do a loop, which is great, that's what we want. 
let me just do something like this for now. Uh, so we have a loop. Let's make them pretty first, or should we first kind of position them properly so that it makes some sort of a form? Maybe making them pretty first is nice. Uh, so let's do... Let's hide them for a bit, like so, so that we only see the output. Oh, by the way, I should probably show you... No, uh, I will show you other inputs in just a second, just wait. Uh, we have nine meshes here. Let's do. Let's slap on a Catmull Clark subdivision on them. Weaverbird Catmull Clark subdivision, like that. Let's hide this. This is how they look like. If we give them level two, bada bing, bada boom. That's how. That's how they look. And then we can have like custom preview. Oh, and I wanted to check this out. What if we do? Um, give me materials. What if I create a new material, metal, and call it meshes, three Zs. Um, and then here for material preview, what if I just say meshes? Does that, is that how it works? I just wonder how to reference in the meshes material. Um, meshes. Yeah, okay, cool. That's how it works. So if you have a material, small tutorial, <laughs> if you have a material here, um, you can reference it in Grasshopper. That's nice. Okay, so we have this and let me just do... Uh, let's go for Arctic view. Apparently not. Let's go for rendered view. Also not. So shaded view is the way to go. Okay, that's good. Cool. Good to know. Super. Uh, can I disable mesh wires here? No, I can't. Can I disable mesh wires here? Yes, I can. And this is how they look like. And they are not that great. But I think if we increase the resolution, they're a little bit better. Okay. So this is what we we end up with. Actually, there's one more thing. There's a little bit too much rounding for my taste. Like everything be became super rounded. So let's do one thing real fast. And that is going to be slapping a Catmull Clark. Catmull Clark subdivision before the high density subdivision so doing this or actually let me show it mm, wait sorry I'm, I'm thinking how do i show it to you so the what i want to do is right now it smooths out too much with catmo clark and i want it to have more polygons that are going around uh, along the straight edges so that when it smooths it just fillets but rather than smoothing the whole thing into a minimal surface well close to a minimal surface so i am going to say okay catmull clark subdivision yes level one smooth naked edges shouldn't be smooth but should be fixed so here instead of one i will right click and choose fixed like that and now if i hide this you can see that all of this becomes filleted and i can even control the fillet threshold by doing this and that perfect everything is just like slightly rounded. Why is this rounded? I don't want this to be rounded. Corner fixed. Super. Okay, good. We made it pretty. Yay. Okay, so we have that going on and I could kind of offset the mesh as well, maybe. Do we offset the mesh? Yeah, we should probably. Ah, uh, later, 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 later. For now, let's call it call it good. Okay, so this is what we what we're working with. 
And now let's actually position everything so that it, it works nice. <clears throat> so I'm going to make, I have no idea what, what I am making, but I'm, I'm thinking of positioning it like so. And maybe let's reduce the level of subdivision for now. Like that. Move it like so. Hmm. So can we... So we could do, do something like this, but that's kind of boring. I could rotate it like so. So it kind of blends like that. What if we increase the amount of steps now? Okay, so it's going to start intersecting there, of course. But I think that's that's fine. Because even with intersections, we end up with something quite quite interesting, especially on this side. <clears throat> Just wondering. There we go, with the wrap again. Let me just... Shush. Okay. So that's that. Um, and actually, let's take the fat one. Move it here. So how does this... First it's boring, then it's cool. Then it's... The strange one. So can the strange one rotate like that? <clears throat> ah, there we go. And this is super glossy, so let me just see if we can change the material. Uh, color red. Uh, oh, okay, so it kind of works. So you need to kind of reset it every time when you want to, when you change something. Well, that kind of sucks. That's fine. Okay, so steel, a little bit more rough. Can we have a bump texture? Like dots or something? Let's see. So no, we can't have a bump texture. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So we're almost almost done here. I'm just kind of test testing out a few things here and there. Maybe the change is a little bit too drastic, so... You know, with, with the whole... Up, 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 that's, that's the wrong rotation. Mm -hmm. That's good. I'm just trying to find a, a nice orientation here. Maybe we can just do something like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's say that's fine. Um, and now we can actually come back to tween con uh, how is that called? Tween consecutive meshes. And we can take a look at other um, very, uh, like uh, other inputs. So weighted. If true, tween distribution is weighted by the input meshes, uh, mesh set, and the tween path curvature. This is interesting because if I toggle this to true, 
Yeah, it's going to become orange, but that's fine. It's, it just says that this thing doesn't work with linear interpolation. And linear interpolation is right here, interpolation type. Uh, I'm skipping over degree of curvature because degree is 3 and we shouldn't change that. But linear interpolation means that it will interpolate in straight lines between the, two, uh, between the three meshes. But if I do... Um, how is that called? So there is like input 0 is linear interpolation, input 1 is chord, then we have squared root and then we have uniform. So there's a slider between 0 dot dot 3, between 0 and 3 slider where I can change the interpolation type. So this is 0, 1 just broke, 2 just broke, 3 just broke. Okay, cool. What if we disconnect this? Okay, so it doesn't work with a loop. Okay, sure. Doesn't work with a loop, that's fine. Um, we, we, we can kind of work around this. Actually, can we then just make something a little bit more? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll play around with this <laughs> later. Sorry, I just started playing immediately with it. Um, so it doesn't work with a closed loop, so we uh, can only do three inputs. I, I guess we could make it pretty damn close to a closed loop. Either way, interpolation one uh, or interpolation uh, type zero is this, straight line. Interpolation type one, two and three are three different ways of how you can calculate curvature. Uh, right, for, for interpolation. So, um, Chord is fine, I guess. We will just be using chord. Um, this is how they look like right now. I think they look fine. That's our Catmo Clark subdivision. Let me just hide that. Um, yeah. So now let's let's make it nice. So proportion-wise, maybe this thing can be bigger, like that. And these two are higher up. Well, this one is lower, lower, back, something like this. I think it's nice. Mm. Doesn't look stable though. Doesn't look stable at all. So maybe I should make this longer like that then of course these these will intersect but we don't really care that that they're intersecting this is just a fun little exercise if you want to like 3d print something like this you just uh, insert it into blender and you voxelize the shit out of it and it's going to be 3d printable um actually i can show you uh, just a second. I, I first want to make it nice. So that... It's a little bit boring like so. Maybe this is nicer, like with the twist. Yeah, let's do the twist. So that's our, our, our twisty bit. And then we have like the end thing, which can be like that, I think. Uh, was nicer like so. Yeah, let's leave it. Let's, yeah, sure. Maybe higher. Eh. To the side more? Yeah, I think to the side is, is nice. Okay, let's make it nice. Uh, nicer. So let's hide those. This is our output. So we have a bunch of Catmull Clark meshes. Let me just flatten the output list. So 24 meshes in total. Not sure if we need more. Let's do offset mesh. I don't know which one I'm using. Like I, I believe Pufferfish has an offset mesh component. 
yeah this one right here offset mesh oh yeah i, I am using puffer fishes offset mesh component um offset distance one i have no idea how big one is this is how big one is and i think that's uh, let's do two let's do two like that why is this not displaying as a doesn't matter it's not glossy anymore but that's i don't care um so it's messing up there quite a bit is there a way of how to okay so i could offset to both sides that would help create solid true yes so we want it to be solid for sure we want it to to we want it to be offset to both sides but then the the, the distance of offset can be less it's a little bit fat isn't it uh, let's do 0 0.7 for distance yeah i think that's that's fine okay so we have that and honestly let's just run it through catmull clark again so that's two subdivisions here that's one subdivision here so we just run it through one more subdivision one last subdivision um without actually changing anything then we do combine and clean for all of these meshes that takes a second to do of course it's it's a heavy procedure and we end up with a single mesh i believe no we don't because this needs to be flattened and then we will end up with a single mesh uh with 362,000 faces which is actually not that bad let's bake it out let's take a look at it in rhino through arctic view I mean, sure, you know, it's something. I, I, I would spend so much more time like fixing the... Mm. Maybe we can do degree one here so that it's a little bit more softer. And in doing so, maybe we can increase the amount of steps to like 20 something like that i think that's gonna look better remember kids more resolution equals better always okay what do we have here actually better <laughs> all right um that is that what the hell is going on here um unify mesh normals there, there there was something weird with with the mesh normals but now now it's fine shush keeps singing okay um i will call it we'll call it a day oh sorry I wanted to show you how to make this 3D printable. So technically, technically speaking, it is 3D printable already, uh, but that's just technically speaking. Practically, you want it to be cleaned up, and for that we will be using Blender. Oh, by the way, there's one more thing in Blender that I want to show you. I know, um, I'm, I'm just kind of saying oh by the way too many times um let me just export this uh without uh, no light no camera just this thing octopus let me export it from blender as an obj or stl let's do obj 
and I'll just export it to my desktop and call it Octopus1. Export. It's gonna do its magic. And now, how many, oh my God. I think I made a mistake. How many vertices are there? Tab. Ooh, that's... Uh, that might be a little bit too much. Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see how, how well does Rhino handle 40,000 vertices. Um, so basically we have that, right? And... I have no idea what toggle x-ray. No, no x-ray, just this. Why is this transparent? I have no idea. That, that's fine though. Let's jump into sculpt mode and let's just mess, mess around with it a little bit. Uh, can I change this matcap? That. Oh, it's still transparent. Why the hell are you transparent? UV map, no. Material. No, transparency off, there we go. So I'm just going to kind of smooth everything out. Uh, strength, let's go for five, strength five. So everything will get super, su super duper smoothed. So more spiky and so on. No face as well. Um, strength 100. Okay. 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 So these things became like like spiky boys. That's that's fine. That's not 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 a big deal. I just wanna try some things out. So let's say I will take. Uh, this area, make a crease here. Take this area, make a crease here. This area, make a crease there. Flatten this side out. Flatten. 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 And flatten this. Okay. And now let's... Uh, let's pinch it. So now that's pinched. That's pinched. I'm not kind of. I'm not creating anything in particular. I'm just. I just want to check how it. How is Grasshopper going to react? Or rather, Pufferfish is going to react to imports from other software, especially ones that are sculpted. Keep in mind, the dynamic topology is turned off, so I am not changing the, um, the, the, the vertices, uh, like the amount of vertices or any, anything. The, the topology is indeed the same. So I will export this one as well as OBJ and call it Octopus 2. Export. We wait uh, until it exports. Actually, we can start importing it. So let me file, import, uh, desktop, octopus one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's super small, isn't it? Let me just scale it up. Uh, 10 times. Yeah, that's good. File, import again. Octopus 2, open. <clears throat> there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Move it to the side again. Oh boy, scale it up 10 times. Okay, so we have two octopus. Pi, octop, octopus, oh, octopi. I'll, I'll go for octopi. Um, we have two of those. The spiky boy uh, and, and the non-spiky boy. 
let's reference them in mesh set one mesh and mesh container again nope that's not a mesh container mesh set one mesh okay so we have these two um and let me just move one of them here so that we can see better let me hide or rather probably they can be bigger so like that and like that something like that uh let's just check um weighted average mesh uh, if that will work weighted average mesh this with this 0.5 no oh equal amount of weights and and meshes okay so 0.5 for both of them meshes are required to have the same topology okay so does it not Valid mesh closed uh, 40,676 vertices. Uh -huh. Okay, I have one, uh, one thought. One thought that might help. No, I don't. So it doesn't work, at least from, from first test. It doesn't work. On your own, what you could try, uh, try and do is add modifier triangulate. So you can triangulate the mesh, but the thing is that when you triangulate it, it might triangulate differently. So importing stuff from other software is indeed going to be tricky. Shit. Okay, so we're not doing that. But instead, let's uh, just create a new file. Uh, general. Don't save that. Delete that. By the way, um, while, while I'm doing this, I'm just basically going to import the, the skyscraper into Blender. So as I'm doing this, you can get these files together with the blender file and all of that jazz you can get all of this um if you're a, a patreon uh, if you're a patreon supporter so this channel lives and dies by patreon please consider supporting the channel uh, and then you will get the whole file you know to, to play around with and work around with um right what 3ds or obj let's go for obj obj um crappy tower save that okay so that's saved let's go to file import obj also even if you're not supporting the channel you know you can get the you can kind of repeat the steps that i'm showing here and then do the traditional thing of, of not being lazy and actually doing what you see on the screen this is uh, just quality of life improvement i think for for people who are supporting the channel and that they are going to get the files um so this as always imports rotated so let me just objects at origin origin to geometry r x 90 nope that's not 90 that's minus 90 enter gz down look at it from the side grab and the position it here i always want like like to position things uh, properly um doesn't look that bad i mean uh, we, we we can get some nice nice renders out of this i think <laughs> But this is not about that. This is about making it, about voxelizing it. 
So let me go to modifier properties, add modifier. And actually first, okay, super important thing. We have no idea how big this thing is. So I will select it, click on N, and then here I see that the dimensions of it are 170 meters. Like let's say it's just two to two meters in height. Okay, that's, that's important to know because now when we do voxelization, which is, I think I remember, um, decimate, edge split, mask, mirror, multi, remesh, remesh. When we do remesh, I think I just crashed the, I think I just crashed Blender. Oh no. I think remesh immediately remeshes. That's, that's not great. Okay. Uh, what do we do while we wait? Nothing. Let me pause the video and then I will, I will remesh it properly. Just a second. Okay, we are back, we're, we're doing the thing, uh, RX uh, 90, not 90, minus 90, always get me, 90, always gets me. Um, G, uh, doesn't matter, somewhere here, okay, this time I will not be remeshing, this time I will actually go to, why can't I go to sculpt mode, I can, so I'll go to sculpt mode, and here I will select remesh from here, from, from sculpt mode, because I can first set up the freaking voxel size and then I can click remesh. So if I do voxel size of one, one meter, I think it's going to be way too low, but let's just see. So one meter voxel size, fix pulse, yeah, sure. Just let, let's just click remesh and see. Okay, so this is how it looks like with voxel size of one. It's not pretty, right? It's not pretty, but it is now a single closed non-self intersecting mesh, like a perfect per a mesh perfect for printing. Meaning that if I control Z and I remesh with half of the size for the voxel remesh, this is going to be a super clean mesh. Well, <laughs> you know, as much as a voxel mesh can be super clean. While it's doing that, let me just save the Rhino uh, file and the Grasshopper file and I'll be uploading that to Patreon in just a second. Uh, so that's tutorial 46, if I believe I'm correct. 46, yes, maybe, yes. So tutorial 2020, 46, save. Great, that's done. And then this one as well, save as tutorial 2020, 46. All right, um, bam, that's done. Yay. Works, works excellent. Everything is connecting properly and everything is nice and everything is sweet and I can even kind of draw sculpt on it, but I won't. Uh, let's go for object mode. Let's turn on the shade smooth component so that it shades smoothly. And this is what we have. Can we make it nice though? I will just uh, really quickly create a light, sunlight, uh, or RX45, RZ, 
Mm. RZ. It's kind of shitty with this. I wonder if we should do it here or if we should do it straight up in Rhino. I'll do it in Rhino. So this is this is just you know to, to show you how to make it 3D printable and how to actually make it producible. Uh, we don't need our grasshopper definition anymore. I'm going to straight up do this and I will be using um, V-Ray renderer because Rhino renderer is crap. If you don't know why, check out my video about why V-Ray, uh, why Rhino renderer is crap. Um, I will probably grab... Um, Is there like a nice material from from the library? Hello, library. Should we do a multi material? While, while it's thinking, let me just change up some settings. Oh, I need to download. Cool. Uh, let's change up some settings. 1080. Um, interactive render. Let's run it. Just to see. Home. Actually, let me speed this up. This is going to take too long. And the video is already long. So, um, I will say bye. I will say thanks for watching. I'll say see you in a, in a few days or a week maybe. We'll see. It's a busy, busy time. Stay safe and... See you.